welcome to episode 73 of Moms with Yarn. My name is Sharon. I am known as Bronx Knitter One on Ravelry and Bronx Knitter on Instagram. Welcome. Today is Sunday, August 19th, and I am behind on everything. So even my knitting. So today we're going to talk about my tour de fleece, the winner of the tour de fleece, my spinning, my finished objects, and all of my whips, which I'm actually whip shaming because I don't seem, to, I seem to knit, 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 and I'm not getting anything done. So we'll talk about it. So for the tour de fleece, we did have a winner and that was Borgia RN. Congratulations, Borgia. And she chose that blue, gray, and black fiber there. But she also said she's coming to New York. So, Borgia, if you're going to be in New York, ping me. I'll meet you someplace in Manhattan. Or if you're going to pass, even though I don't think so, if you're going to pass through New York City, then you should ping me and maybe I can meet you someplace and hand you your, your fiber so you don't have to wait for it to come to you in the mail. Or I could just mail it to the place that you're coming to visit in New York, whichever. Either way, let me know and send me your address and send me an address and I'll mail it to you. So my tour de fleece goals were not met, but I did get pretty far. And as you can see, I have some green and some blue and some yellow and lots and lots of white. And I did manage to spin one spool of this and it only wanted to be spun woolen which is the long draw, the backwards long draw. And it came out pretty good, I would say. It has quite a halo on it, but it's not, it's, it's pretty smooth for outerwear. I'm not sure that this wouldn't stick me later. I'm not 100% sure. You can see all that fuzz on top. And it's going to have to be plied because otherwise it's just not going to hold up as a sweater, which is what I'm planning to make. And the sweater I want to make is called Charlemont by Laura Ayler. And it requires a main color. And these white, uh, this white fiber is going to be dyed. I don't know why there's such a glare. It's going to be dyed a medium gray color. So that'll be the main body, and then I'll use those three colors as accents. I have an abundance of the yellow, and I have quite a bit of the blue, but only a little bit of the green. So I got to work enough of the white to see if I get enough yardage to make the sweater. And if I don't have enough to make it for myself, maybe I'll make it for somebody else. But this is what it looks like. That's what I got done. That's part of what I got done. Um, the other thing is, who it's hot in this little corner. I think it's the light. Um, the other spinning I got done was, a while back I had processed some Lester that I purchased from the spinning loft. And I, it was rough. It was rough feeling. So I had some leftover loop bat, which was up on that spool with that yellow there and so I plied them together so it is overspun it is rough as a brillo pad and it is tacky like it feels still kind of sticky and I know that I washed it plenty of times but it's still kind of rough and it doesn't help that the loop bat had some Stellina in it, which just complicates things. I don't know what the yardage is because after it was um, spun and plied and I realized how rough it was, I wasn't much interested in it beyond that point. It'll become pot holders because that's what it's going to be good for. And that is all I can say about that. You're like the best knitter in the world. <laughs> they paying you for these yet? No. Y'all need to pay her for these already, man. 
Uh, the other spinning that I did love was, you. love you, was from Friends in Fiber. It was 100% Targi and in the Rainbow Spots colorway. And I love this. Love it, love it, love it. I love all the colors in here. It is definitely a rainbow. It came out as a sport weight, I want to say. And, well, it's not exactly a rainbow because there's no red in here. But close enough. I don't know what the yardage is because I didn't measure because I was too busy trying to spin, trying to decide between spinning something when I had nothing because all this stuff has, has to still be drum carded. And so I did this and then I figured I want to make a cowl out of this. And I figured I could use some of this blue. Spin up some of this blue because I have a lot of this. Some of this blue and make a cowl. I think it'll be a nice accent color. I love it. So I'm um, thinking about that. In the meanwhile, this sport weight is gorgeous and soft and squishy and boing, boing, boing. I love it. So that was, that was all I got done for a tour de fleece. And when I say all I got done, in addition to my spinning is all of that. So I think that was pretty remarkable considering that I have plenty of fiber in this house that needs to be spun and I'm sitting here processing a fleece that I purchased all the way back in 2013. So to me, I have earned my Lantern Rouge and I'm happy. I'm happy about that. Especially since I already have a, an idea in, in mind about what I want to make with it. So it won't be really hanging around here very long. Okay. That takes care of the tour de fleece portion of the program. And now I can get to my finished objects, right? I hope so. I forgot they're on the back of my chair. Yikes. I don't know what that was. So I'm working on the year long knit along, which is the Mitten Advent Calendar by Kathy Lewinsky, and I am using Knit Picks Palette Yarn, which you all know is in that top bin right there. All of that is Knit Picks Palette that I purchased, oh, 2008. I bought all the colors, and they're in there. So what I did manage to do was finish Mitten Number. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. So I am caught up for the, I don't know if you can tell if those, if you can see those snowflakes, they're pretty pale. But they're snowflakes. And these mittens, yeah, they're pretty fiddly to make. But like this one had occasional red Christmas balls, I guess they are. So I just did duplicate stitch to get them on. It didn't always work out, but it's good enough. So now I have this many and there's only 24. I say only 24 as if that was, this was all very easy. It wasn't, it was sometimes painful to, to make. I'm missing mitten number 13. Because it's here. 
this is what I have so far. I'm you can use I've used like maybe I broke I had a couple of partially used white skeins. I have I'm I ran out of the true red and I switched to the raspberry heather and I'm using the same skein of green that I used in all of them because I'm not even close to running out of that and this is this is them from 1 to 18 so I started this 2 years ago because I had watched a podcast with um, Ken, who was the turbo knitter then, I think he's since changed his name, but, uh, I saw him making them, but he was making them the size for a real person's hands. And I thought, Oh, 24, if they're little, they should be easy and it should go quick. And it is easy, but it's not quick. So I made it a year long knit along because I want to get them done. I want them. I just don't want to make them. So it's slow going. You know, when you're doing stranded knitting, it never goes quick. All that switching colors and following a pattern, you know, it is what it is. I'm enjoying the fact that they're done and I have them, but I can't wait to be finished with them. That would really make me happy. I'm going to hang them in a banner right across my my bookshelf to cover up all of my ooh, my book crimes. The books on this shelf are not even half of what I have. I just Moving on. Um let's talk about my whips. So the first one that I have is the Pascal top by Emily Walton. For expression, or I'm sorry, Pascal, P A S C A L, tank, by Emily Walton for Expression Fiber Arts. This was a pattern that was free for a limited time, and I wish I had printed it in color so you could get a better idea of what it looks like. But you can't see, but the neckline on this is pretty low, and I don't want my neckline to go that low. So that's the front and. This is what it looks like from the side. So you can see that one side has buttons and the other side does not have buttons. And, you know, if I was as thin as Shandy, who owns Expression Fiber Arts, I, I got junk in my trunk. So I have to make my top a little bit shorter than what hers is, but... I thought it would be a cute summer top and it just so happens that it calls for I believe it calls for lace weight yes it calls for a lace weight yarn and I just happen to have some it comes from mystic creations yarn which is no longer in business um, it looks like a football because I couldn't find my ball winder when I was winding it by hand. And anyway, it was stuck. It was sticky and stuck together. Not felted, just stuck together. So it is all the pretty pastels. This is true representation of the color. It didn't look nearly this good in a hank, but anyway. So I'm using a US 5 needle. I believe that's what the pattern calls for. And I have gotten up the side of one. What is going on? I got up one sleeve. And I think you're supposed to work like six or seven inches. But if it was six or seven inches, it would probably be down here someplace. Short people don't need six or seven inches, and I'd like it to be about as low as this. So I probably only need to do about two inches, maybe three, uh, to the top of my shoulder. And I'll do the same with this side. And then, uh, 
work on the other side. I think it's two panels exactly the same. So this is the side that's going to get seamed up. And this is the side that has the buttons. It has a garter tab for the button band. And it also has a garter hem. So pretty nice. I like it. It's going to be a nice summer top. And I can see you. So it'll probably require me to wear a tank underneath. No problem. So this is what it looks like, and I thought I would be finished with it in time to wear it this summer, but seeing as how it's August 15th and I'm not even finished with the first half, who knows how far I'll get. And if I can't wear it this summer, I'll wear it next summer, depending on how many donuts I eat between now and then. So that's whip number one. Whip number two, pardon me for going out of frame because my bag fell on the floor. Whip number two is in a bag that was given to me by Tracy. It has Marvel characters on it. This one is it's called the leafage top. And I don't know what happened to my pattern. I had a picture of it. I swear I had a picture of it. Nope. That's not it. Well, anyway, I better find the picture of it because the picture has the pattern on it. Oh well, I'll find it. <clears throat> it's around here someplace. So I am using Play It Life Fiber Arts in the color called the gray. And it has some spots on it, which was why it was being sold at a discount. But it's in her Just Sport, which is 8020 Marina, Superwash Marino and Nylon. And I'm gonna put this back on the chair. So I managed. To get up to the sleeve, the start of the sleeve, and when this thing blocks out, you can see how low. This is where the V starts. Uh, I'm going to need to wear a tank underneath it. But this is what it looks like, and you can see some of the spots, I'm sure. They're very faint, but there's gold and blue and orange, and there's a few spots in here. I don't mind because I think it adds interest to the yarn. I happen to really like it. It's super duper soft. And I am alternating skeins because that's what you do when you have indie dyed yarn. And these are two yarn pancakes. This one is the same thing as in here, but I had to do a little bit of uh, unwinding. So, or what is it called? Negative knitting. I had to rip some stuff out because I did a screwy Louie thing, lost sight of the pattern and had leaves in the wrong places, but everything's to rights now, except the yarn ball. So, Again, another top that I thought, oh, it's, you know, mostly stockinette stitch. I could have it finished in time to wear it this summer. And that didn't happen. So it has a garter hem. And the construction of the sweater is that you make both sides. You go up and over. You make the back. And then at some point in the back, you just join the bottom. And when you're done, you just sew underneath the 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 side seam and that's it 
So I didn't get very far. I don't know why. And hopefully, well, you know, if I don't finish it this summer, I'll finish it next summer. Like I said, it'll fit. It has to fit. I don't want to share this yarn with anybody else. So it, it has to, it has to fit. I don't know what, what bag I got this out of. Yes, I do. So that's in here. And again, that is the leafage top. And I know that at some point it must have been free for a limited time or permanently free. And the pattern is by Andina Henning. H E N I N G, and I probably it should probably be in a bigger knitting bag, which would cut down on some of the wrinkles. But it is what it is. So that is that. The other thing I'm working on is the modern baby blanket. From Mason Dixon Knitting. Yeah, I got that book. I got a picture of that. That's in this book. And they don't really have, well, they do have pictures of the blanket in here. Bad podcaster, unprepared, unprepared. It looks like this and it's sorry about the glare I don't know what you can see because I can't see you so <clears throat> this is the one I'm making and the pattern is free on Ravelry the only thing is that the free pattern doesn't give you the I-cord bind off. And it's an artist rendering and she says that the reason why they did that was so that you can use your own creativity to come up with the colors. And so that's exactly what I did. I called Knit Picks and the lovely customer service lady, and I can't remember her name. I wrote it down, it's at work. Um, I said, I need four colors and I need them to coordinate the main color that I want, the main two colors that I want is clarity and sky. I love those two colors and that's, that's what I want. So I need two other colors to match. So she put together the color scheme and she helped me out. Yay. I love Knit Picks customer service. So clarity, which is like a pale, pale, blue and the glare is not going to let it it's like a silvery blue and sky and dove heather and denim so these were the colors that she picked out for me i just had to come up with the order and I couldn't really think about the order too much, but I kind of like what I got. So it's working. So my nephew and his girlfriend just had twins, so I need two of these blankets. So they need to be big enough to go over an infant car seat and an infant stroller. And garter stitch is nice and cushy. It's 100% acrylic. It goes in the washing machine. So it's going to be no fuss, no muss. And, you know, it's, I started yesterday and I got this far because, you know, garter stitch is kind of like my jam. And, um, it's nice and squishy and the price was right because this yarn was on sale. So not bad for two days of knitting. And I think that's everything. Who knew it would be over that quick? Sorry about going out of frame. I don't know. This was mitten number 18. 
that's what the snowflakes are supposed to look like. But it's so pale, you can't even see it. So, my friends, thank you for being with me. Thank you for subscribing. Oh, that light is bright. That's much better. Um, thank you for subscribing. And if you're if you liked what you've seen and you're interested in seeing some more, then hit that subscribe button. And sorry to say my podcasts are irregularly posted, so maybe you want to hit the bell too, so you can know when the next episode comes up. And I want to just say thank you for joining me, and I will see you when I come back in about two weeks. Until then, happy knitting.